also wanting to honor my mom here today. Uh, she hasn't been back out in three years, and my mom is 85 years young. And uh, Mama, thank you for joining us today. Mom uh, has been in the ministry uh, over 60 years. And uh, they planted churches, her and dad did, and, and just anyways, you're uh, one of my favorite people in all the world. And, but I, I take a lot of my, uh, how do I say, uh, my persistence, my stubbornness, I stay with it. I get that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Because this one, well, yesterday I took her fishing, and my mom, again, 85 years old, we went out there early. She stayed until 2 in the afternoon. She does not quit. But I caught on video something, just to prove to you, and uh, I just got to tell you this in advance, she did not hurt herself. Okay? Watch the screens. All right, right here, me and this lady. We've caught... Oh, you, oh, oh, mama, 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 mama. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta get this. I gotta get this. <laughs> Mama, what are you doing? What are you doing, Mom? I can't get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> That's my mama. I mean, you talk about it, I don't quit. Mama, you don't quit, do you? Oh my gosh, that cracked me up. I, I was laughing, then I thought, oh my gosh, if she hurt herself, I am really in deep weeds with my sisters. And, uh, but, and I said, Mom's gonna make a great story if you're okay. If you're not okay, then we don't tell anybody what happened, okay? <laughs> We've been in this amazing series on the end times over the last uh, three weeks and uh, we've talked about, uh, one week we looked at uh, an overview of the book of Revelation of future events uh, we talked about then the rapture of the church, the catching away of believers. Someday it's the next great prophetic event on God's calendar. And we talked about it being imminent, meaning it literally can happen at, at any day, at any time. It could happen before we get through here today. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is coming back to earth soon. And, and, but what the series has done is it stirred up a lot of questions, fun questions, interesting questions, about the, uh, the end times, but also about the next life, about the other world. And, uh, and it's just been, Pastor Barr's been a lot of fun, hasn't it? Yeah, so I get the privilege today to actually dive into some of these questions. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what, if the Bible says, you know, answers the question clearly, I'll tell you the Bible says, but if it's just my opinion, I'm gonna tell you that, and you can choose to, to disagree and be wrong if you'd like, it's fine, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, just kidding. But I want to give you the first, uh, the first question is very controversial about the next life. Do pets go to heaven? Do pets go to heaven? So I want to tell you absolutely unquestionably, unequivocally, the answer is it depends. <laughs> is it a cat or is it a dog? If it's a dog, there's a chance. If it's a cat, mm -mm, going to hell. <laughs> going to Hades. How, how many of you, oh, I'm going to get a lot of feedback on all the cat lovers. I'll give them to you, Pastor Bart. That's what I do. Bless you, my son. All right. Uh, let's do a vote. How many of you think that pets go to heaven? Can I see your hand? Pets go to heaven. Okay. How many of you say pets probably don't go to heaven? Can I see your hand? Wow, there's three of you. That's really awesome. Okay, cool. So this is really going to go well, I can tell. So to those of you who say, yes, my dog, my cat goes to heaven, I got another question for you. If there is a heaven for pets, is there a hell for pets? It's like this. If a dog is bad, it just pees on the carpet all the time. Dog, you're going to hell. But if it's a good dog, it never pees inside the house, dog, you're going to heaven. So what do we know? What does the Bible say? Well, let, let me kind of give you a, an idea of what we know. Uh, God created man in his own image, and God breathed spiritual life into man. He became a living soul. However, God created animals, but not in his own image, and nowhere do we see that God breathed spiritual life into animals. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, 
We know that whoever believes in Jesus, though, uh, uh, though he dies, if you die, you will be resurrected, you will live forever. As far as I know, no dog has ever called on the name of the Lord. <laughs> as far as I know, that's not happened. Jesus died for people, so I do not see anywhere in Scripture that Jesus died for our pets. Now, before you shoot me, be, before, uh, before I go hang myself, because Toby's not going to heaven with me, my dog, I'm going to give you a little bit of hope. Just give you a little bit of hope to hang on to. How many of you know there's going to be animals in heaven? There's going to be animals in heaven. You say, where'd you get that from? Glad you asked. Isaiah 11, 6. Isaiah's prophesying about the coming kingdom, the eternal kingdom of God. It says, the wolf will lie down with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat, and the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. Revelation 19, which we'll read later, said, describes Jesus, the king, coming back to earth, and he's riding a what? He's riding a white stallion. So for all the folks in northwest Bakersfield who love horses, there's going to be horses in heaven. So there's going to be cowboy boots in heaven as well, I'm sure. So maybe, just maybe, because God knows how much I love my little Toby, that there's going to be Toby in heaven with me. Maybe your little Fluffy is going to be in heaven with you too. We'll see. By the way, I'm sure about the cat issue. They ain't going, all right? They ain't going. Another question that is uh, asked, uh, asked often when you talk about the next life uh, is should a Christian be cremated? Now, the Bible doesn't speak to this issue clearly. It, it, it really, you need to think through it, pray through it, study the Bible about it for your own self. The Bible is not clear exactly the answer to this question. However, I want to give you my idea. Because the question that a lot of you and I are thinking about is, is when Jesus Christ comes back to earth, the rapture takes place, and we talked about it last week, that, that the Bible says those who have died in the faith, they're followers of Jesus Christ, that they are going to somehow, some way, be resurrected, and their bodies are going to come back together, and they're going to be transformed or, or, or uh, made into a glorified, brand new body. How is that all going to to work. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Let's all read this together out loud. Everybody, one, two, three, ready, go. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are alive, I'm uh, sorry, and we who are living will also be transformed. So the question is, is it possible that the, that the resurrected body will happen to those who have been cremated? Well, I'm glad you asked that. So let me give you what I believe. All through the ages, Christians have been martyred for their faith. All you got to do is to read history books and you see where believers have been burned at the stake and all that's left of them are ashes when they were burned at the stake. We know that believers have, have been in house fires and they've been burned alive and there's nothing left of them. Or men or women who go over to, to, to serve in a war and they, 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 you know, they, they die on the battlefield and their bodies are just, where are they at? They're, they're no longer here. Also, we know that a Christian that is buried is decomposing. The body is breaking down and doing what Genesis says, for, for dust you are and to dust you shall return. So here's my take. If God can restore a decomposed body, I believe that God can also restore a body that's been cremated. And by the way, I think sometimes we just forget who we're talking about. We are talking about Yahweh, the God that creates heavens and universes. We're talking about the God, the God that stands on nothing, and with a word, he creates galaxies and universes and planets and all of that with a word. So can God bring all these pieces, the dust and the, the ashes back together and make a glorified body? You bet he can't, because he is the almighty God. 
He's the Almighty Father. And by the way, I'm really excited about having a God bud. How about you? <laughs> You're going to get a new body. Think about that, a God bod. It's no longer going to be, you hear about, you know, bodies by Ari or bodies by Tyler. I saw Tyler back here. Where is he at? Yeah, bodies by Tyler. Oh, 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 oh. Or, you know, bodies by Allie, whatever. No, no, no. On that day, in the resurrection, billions of believers are going to have bodies by Jesus. Anybody looking forward to a brand new body? A brand new body? You are going to look fine. You're going to be able to go to heaven. You're going to eat food, all the food you want, all the carbs you want, all the calories you want, and not get fat. I'm going to eat chicken fried steak, lots of gravy. That's going to be heaven. All right, let's get fun here. Uh, will people be married or have sex in heaven? Wah, wah, wah. Everybody's like, what's he going to say? As much as I, as I would like to say yes, because I want to be married to this lady down here, in front for the rest of my life throughout all eternity in heaven, scripture indicates there could be something very different. Well, what do you mean? Well, Jesus said, Jesus, our teacher, our Lord said in Matthew twenty two thirty, 30, he said, at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. Well, think about it. It'd be a little complicated in heaven uh, on one hand because if, if, let's say somebody was married two times. Let's just say four times. Who is your wife? Who is your husband? We could be like the Mormons. No offense to the Mormons, but I'm, they're all my wives. You know what I'm saying? We like the, the Muslims. I could have 72 and, you know. What if someone was married to someone who had died and then they remarried somebody else and then they all get to heaven and then he looks at her and he looks at her and goes, oh, shoot. could get complicated. But I do know that we will have relational connections in heaven. The Bible says we're gonna know and be known as we are. So I gotta tell you right now, I've already put in a request to have Lydia as my roommate. <laughs> or at least live next door. Hey girl. <laughs> and that leads me to this, the second part of this question. Will there be sex in heaven? Will there be sex in heaven? Some of you say, yeah, it's going to be heaven. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, since there's no marriage in heaven, there probably will not be any sex in heaven. As hard as that is for a lot of you to hear right now, I guarantee you every desire you have will be met in the presence of an all-sufficient, glorious God. Somehow, some way, something, something better than sex will be in heaven. I know your mind can't comprehend that. <laughs> But it's true. By the way, for those of you that that's a devastating thought, you're going into depression right now. After service out in the lobby, we'll have prayer teams for you because <laughs> you don't think there's going to be sex in heaven. So here's my advice. Here's my advice. If you're married, you might as well get it while you can. <laughs> can I get a witness today? Can somebody say amen to that? After church, you know what's going to be happening. <laughs> Mama, aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> She's down there going, oh, my son. All right, let's try another one. Should we try to contact the dead? A question just in time for Holly, uh, Halloween. I was going to say Hollywood. <laughs> Halloween. Some of you are old enough, uh, enough to remember the, the old song that goes, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, right? Yeah. Should we try to contact the dead? It's, it's a bigger question than what you realize. There are a lot of people believe, they do absolutely believe in a spirit world. And there are people that are, and I'm talking about believers, Christians, that don't know the answer to this. And this, this question really opens up a lot of sub-questions. 
For example, little kids do a, a seance. You know, they don't, they don't need anything by it. They turn down the lights, light a candle, they get in a circle, hold hands, and they do a chant, and then they scare the fire out of each other. Is it a deal? You know, some little girl, she's got a, she's got a doll. She picks up the doll, and she has a needle and says, this is Molly, and you stole my boyfriend. And she's like, wow, 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 wow. Is that cute? Is that, or is that dangerous? And, and something that I, I honestly I didn't really understand until a few years ago, it got personal with a, some family friends, uh, but there's a lot of people who are totally into witchcraft right now. I'm not talking about irreligious people. I'm talking about believers that are open to witchcraft. They don't call it that, but it is what it is. So is it okay to cast spells? Is it okay to have someone read our palms or, or you know, look at these tarot cards and predict our, our, our future or dial 1-900 numbers and pay four ninety nine a minute so Madam Bolivia can tell you where your lost keys are? Is it innocent or is it dangerous? The Bible is so clear on this. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Let no one, ever say no one, no one, no one be found among you who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or casts spells, or who is a medium or a spiritist, or who consults the dead, consults the dead. Anyone who does these things, say it with me, is? Detestable. It's detestable to the Lord. So as your pastor who loves you, I gotta warn you, it's not cute, it's not innocent, it's incredibly dangerous. We wanna stay far away from that, that world as, as much as we can. So let me go to another question. Here's one that people ask all the time. Will we, will we remember our lives when we're in heaven? In other words, when you're in heaven, will you remember what you happen, what happened in your life in your journey on earth? How many of you know there's a lot of things that we'll want to remember because we have good memories? But how many of you agree you got some things that happen in your life that you don't want to remember throughout eternity? You prefer not to think about. Mm -hmm, me too. So there are those people who say, I don't believe. I don't think that we will able, be able to remember our lives on earth when we're in heaven. And, and they, they pull out the prophecy from Isaiah uh, 65, 17 that says, Behold, God says, Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to our minds. So people say, Well, obviously, we don't, if, if we don't remember the former things, then we won't remember life. But the question is, what are those former things? Do they include all things, everything, or do they, they not include everything? There are those of us who say, yes, I do think that we're gonna be able to remember what happened on earth in our lives. And we point to Luke chapter 16. A lot of you know this story. It's the story that Jesus told about a rich dude. He had lots and lots of money, but he dies and he goes to a place called Hades, hell. It's a very torturous place. And then it's, it's the story about Lazarus who is poor on earth, but then he dies and he, he goes to paradise and he's there in, in the presence of Abraham, the father of our faith. And the Bible says that, that this rich guy, while he is there, he distinctly remembered his brothers on earth. He has five brothers who, who don't know God and he's saying, tell somebody to tell my brothers, don't come to this place, it's horrible. He, he absolutely remembered his brothers on earth. There's also this thing called the judgment seat of Christ. We talked about it in this series, Pastor Bard. The judgment seat is not whether, whether or not you get into heaven or not. It's when we all stand before the king of the universe, Jesus Christ, and Jesus will reward you for all the things you've done in this life. He's gonna pass out rewards for the good deeds that we've done. He's gonna judge us on our works. If we can remember our good works on earth, then surely we can remember at least some of our lives. So I personally believe that when we get to heaven and for all eternity, we will have memories of our journey on earth. So here's another one. 
Can people in heaven see what's happening on earth right now? Can people that's in heaven, in the presence of God, look down on planet earth and see everything that's, it's kind of like a football stadium. And they're, they're like they're watching the Dallas Cowboys lose down in the field. And you know, they're like, what's, what's happening? Look at that. Oh, look at Bart go. Go, Bart go. Is it possible that they're viewing us right now? Well, James, it just brings me a lot of comfort to think that Grandma, she's gone home to be with the Lord, but she's my guardian angel. She's watching over me, and, and I'm not minimizing that. That brings you comfort. That's good. But for me, there's some things I don't want Grandma watching. <laughs> there's just things, Grandma, you just stay in heaven, close your eyes. In fact, just thinking about it could completely spoil. That doesn't bring me comfort. Can people see what's going on? They're in heaven looking down. Can they see what's going on? My, my dad passed away three years ago. Lydia's dad just passed away a few months ago. Can, can dad and Thomas look down and see what's happening in this room right now? No. In, in my opinion, it's no. But those who believe that go to the scripture in, uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. It says that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And, and, and they say that, what that means is we are surrounded by those who've gone before us and they're witnessing what's going on on earth right now. However, in my opinion, I see them as witnesses not to what's happening on the earth as much as they are witnesses to the faithfulness, the goodness, and the glory of God. Now, to those of us who, who think that I don't think that they can see what's going on, on earth, we go back to Luke chapter 16. That story of, of the rich man in hell, in Hades, and, and, and Lazarus with, 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 with Abraham. The rich guys in Hades, and, and, and although the guys in hell, he could remember his five brothers who are still on earth, who, are, who, who were without Christ, but there's no evidence, absolutely no evidence, that he could see what's going on on earth. He had recollection, he could remember, but he could not see what's happening on this planet. The truth is, the truth is, a lot of you have loved ones that are in heaven right now. If they, if they looked down on this planet and saw what was going in our lives, but in the, in, on this planet, it would bring excruciating pain to them. And here's the truth. In heaven, there is no pain. There's only pleasure. There's only joy. There's only shalom. There's only peace. There, there's none of that. So I don't think they're looking down on this earth right now and it's breaking their heart what they're seeing. So... That, that's, that's my take on it. By the way, I just got to say this. I think they're so preoccupied with what's happening in paradise right now. Are you kidding? They're walking down streets of pure gold and every handle is a, is a diamond and, you know, every door, door is a pearl and they're hanging out and they're, they're eating good food and ha talking to my dad and Lydia's dad are getting in trouble. I know they are. I know they are. Seriously, heaven isn't like this little place where, you know, just you're a little like a like an angel, a little fat angel on a harp and strumming for all eternity. No, 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 they're, they're in heaven right now having a fantastic time. Let me say something. God tricks you into living by only giving you a taste of what heaven's like. Because if God gave you a full glimpse of what heaven's like, you'd sit around and beg to die. You'd beg to die. You'd want out of here. So it is my conviction, my belief, that what's going on right now in heaven, they're there, and we're here. So one more thing I want to talk about, and this is going to take a moment because we need to talk about it. Is there more, here's the question, is there more than one way to get to heaven? A lot of you, ah, duh, James, come on. No, th this question is weightier than you can imagine. Because as we think of the end times and we think of the hereafter, we think of heaven, we think of hell. Eternal separation from God, eternal abiding in God's presence for all eternity hinges on this question. Is there more than one way to get to heaven? Truthfully, this claim that Jesus made and that we affirm at New Life Church, that Jesus is the only way to God, the only way to heaven, is the most offensive thing in Christianity. Because we're saying that Jesus is the exclusive way to God. 
In our culture today, it's incredibly popular to talk about God, to talk about spiritual things. It wasn't that way just 30, 40 years ago. You didn't talk about God. You didn't talk about spirituality. But nowadays, listen to the late night talk show host. Listen, listen to your favorite podcast to talk about, hey, I just want to thank God. And it's hip. It's cool. It's dope. Oh, James, that's I mean, he just talked about God. But watch what happens. The moment they say this, I want to thank my Lord Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, it becomes a super controversial issue. Because we live in a world of, of pluralism and it's all, all roads lead to God. There's this uh, young man, he's a quarterback for the Houston Texans. His name is C.J. Stroud. I love this kid. As a rookie last year, he led his team to a division title and this year they're, they're leading their division. He's an amazing young man. C.J. is a devout follower of Jesus Christ. But let me tell you what happened last January. They won the divisional title. They're moving on the playoffs. NBC does an interview. And all of a sudden, when he says, first and foremost, I want to thank my, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what he says, first thing. That's what he always says. But do you know when NBC reposted that later, they edited out that line. I wondered to myself, would they have edited that out if he would have said, I want to praise and thank Allah. I wonder if NBC would have edited out if he, he would have dealt with the, you know, with the cultural issues of transgen transgenderism or, or what's happening in the Middle East, if he would have said something about that. But the moment he said, I want to praise and thank my Lord Jesus Christ. C.J. Stroud, by the way, kneels before every game because he knows that Jesus is king. When you get in the presence of the king, you kneel. So you watch every game he does. And just literally two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I saw this. So they're going to run the video while I talk about it. But he is just before the game. And I watched this. And he, all of a sudden, C.J. Stroud is kneeling and he's praying, talking to God and giving him honor and praise. And, and to me, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But in our culture, all of a sudden, it's a big deal. Why? Because Jesus didn't claim to be cousins with Buddha. He didn't claim to be cousins with Muhammad. Jesus claimed to be Christ, which means the anointed one, the Messiah, the only way to the Father. But here's the challenge. You say, James, why are you, why are you spending so much time on this? Because according to a new survey, nearly 70% of born-again Christians in America, ages 18 to 55, disagree with the biblical position that Jesus is the only way to God. 70% of the believers say Jesus isn't the only way to God. Four out of five of those polled strongly agreed with the statement that Muhammad, Buddha, and Jesus all taught valid ways to God. So what is the truth? Because the way you answer this determines your eternity. It really matters. So what is the truth? What did Jesus say? The truth is Jesus said in John 14, 6 through 7, he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one, ever say no one. No one comes to the Father except how? Through me. Acts 4.12, salvation, getting into heaven, escaping hell, having a life of salvation now. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name, no other name under heaven given to, to men by which they must be saved. That is the reason why here at New Life we're always singing this song, what a beautiful name. It is Jesus Christ. You have no rival. You have no equal. You are God. It's your kingdom. It's your glory. In our culture, we unashamedly stand up and say, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is the only way not to go to hell and to get into heaven. He's the only way to enjoy the abundant life now. We serve Jesus, the King of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. It's the reason why Revelation 19 and the end of times, it says at the end of everything, listen, Revelation 19, then I saw heaven opened 
and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. On his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. He is triumphant in the end of days above all kings, all presidents, all monarchs, all emperors. It's Jesus Christ will stand alone at the top. Jesus says in Revelation 22, look, I am coming soon. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. And then he says this, I am, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's coming soon to redeem the planet, to redeem all things, to bring Eden back to earth to restore all things to what's, what they were originally in the garden. He's coming soon. So I say to you what I've said three weeks in a row as I concluded my messages, I'm gonna say it to you. Plan your life like you're gonna live here 100 years. Have your babies. Have a career. Make lots of money, pay your tithe. Live your life, plan it like you're going to live. You're going to plan your life like you're going to be here a hundred years, but live your life like Jesus Christ can come back today because he could. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I fall my knees and pray come Jesus come let today be the day and sometimes I feel like I'm gonna break but I'm holding that won't fail.
And we'll stay face to face Come and lay it all down Cause it might be today for Jesus a passion for the eternal we bow our hearts before you everlasting father the creator of all things and Lord we're asking you to give us a more eternal focus I gotta ask you so are you living your life more for the now than the eternal truth be told I struggle with this often living for the now, living for the moment, living for here, getting caught up in pressures and challenges and beautiful experiences. But every now and then in life, God wants us to slow down and remember that we are made of spirit, soul, and body, and our spirit is going to be eternal. Our, our real person is going to be forever lasting. And Jesus is saying, set your hearts on heaven. Fix your thoughts on eternity. Because as you do, you're going to live life to its fullest. And then one day when it's time to leave this earth, you will leave with full joy in your heart because you're going into the presence of Jesus the King in paradise. Those of you would just say, James, I, I really want to live more for the eternal. I've been too much into the things that do not last, and I just want to live more for the eternal, the everlasting. I need the spirit to just move in me right now. If that's you, just quickly raise up your hand. I want to live my life more for the eternal. Yeah, yeah, good. I want to pray over you. I want to pray over you. If you're watching online, pray with us. Hallelujah. Father God, in this moment right now, give us eternal eyes. Help us to see people around us the way you see them. Help us to live each day in view of eternity. Help us to repent quickly, daily, of temporary living. Help us to live, to aim to live more holy and separate lives for you. Live indifferently from the culture and the world that is spinning out of control. Help us to live for the day we will experience the embrace of you, the King of heaven, and hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. For all of you who are following Jesus Christ, but you've not surrendered yourself completely through water baptism today, commit, follow through, get baptized. That's telling him how much you love him. There's some of you today, I just got to ask you, you, you're listening to me and you know your life's not fully surrendered to God's son. 
Are you trusting in Jesus alone for your salvation? Is he the one who is dominating and leading your life? I would say to you, make Jesus king. Make Jesus Messiah. Make Jesus savior of your life right now. Eternity is at stake. Today, believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. And you only get to the Father through putting your faith in what he did for you at the cross. And right now, God is going to enter into your soul and bring you saving power saving grace that's going to help you in this life and in the life to come and that one day the coming king is going to receive you into his paradise that's quite a deal to just believe on him you will be saved if that is you right now i want to ask you the count of three to raise up your hand and you're not going to come down front and pray right where you're at but today is your day to receive the king of heaven jesus as lord and savior into your heart if that's you one two, three. Would you raise up your hand right now and keep them up. Keep them up where I can see who's praying with me. Good. Hands going up. Hands going up. Yes, in the back. Yes, down front. Over in the sides. I see you. More importantly, God sees you. He sees your heart. This is a faith decision today. I want you to pray with me, everybody in this room. And if you're watching online, raise your hand to Jesus. Say, today's my day, Lord. Today's my day. Let's all pray this out loud. Say, King Jesus, I want you to come into my life today. So I surrender my full self to you now, good, bad, and ugly. I give you all of myself, for you have given to me all of yourself when you went to the cross to pay for my sins. Right now, I commit myself to you, and I accept your free gifts of forgiveness, of power, to change my life, an everlasting life in heaven someday. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Come on, everybody, let's celebrate. Can we do that?